Hi, my name is Bruno Miguel. I'm a musician producer working my own electronic pop music act called Paper Cuts. And I've been producing for other international artists. And lately I'm composing for movie scores. So the main goal of this video is to showcase a technique I've been developing that enables you to get a loud, clear mix while maintaining dynamics and not over squashing the mix. Nowadays, I feel that's part of the modern music language. And instead of just relinquishing that task to the mastering engineer who gets a stereo file, I prefer to do it throughout my mix. It's also useful for you to get a demo that sounds close to the finished result and you could share it with the artist you're working with or with your clients. And I also use it to get the backing tracks for my live project ready for stage. This is the session I'll be showcasing. It's the final mix process using my technique on a song called Valsh from an upcoming Paper Cuts album recorded between Portugal and Iceland called So Far So Fading. Translated to Valleys, it's sung in Portuguese because I felt it matched the lyric poetic nature. And in terms of music genre, it's electronic pop with halftime drum pattern, 808 sub, hi-hat rolls, but with this digital IC FM synths with multiple arpeggios coming in and out of phase with each other, which gives the song a lot of movement. As sort of an advanced single, I wanted it to sound familiar, but with this left fill edginess to it, which is something that I do try to bring to the table in some of the songs that I work in Paper Cuts. This record has this dual side to it. It features large chamber acoustic recordings, but also electronic music made on a laptop, which is something that I've been doing this past couple of years, working my music whenever and wherever I can. Just so it doesn't look too cluttered, this is a mix down of the original studio session, which is made up of dozens of tracks. And basically this project is showcasing the main elements of the song. The sub, the kick, the bass, the melodic instrumentation, the snare, the percussion, the backing vocals, the lead vocals and the cymbals. And they've been lined up according to their frequency content from the lowest one to the highest. In the original session, all of these sounds have been sort of fine-tuned. So there's some compression and EQing already. You can also use this as a routing in your DAW, maintaining all of the original audio recordings in case you want to fine tune them. So the idea here is not to lock these elements into their own group, also make sure that they work well together. The advantage is that instead of applying a dynamic processing in the stereo master, we're making sure that this is spread out throughout the various elements. And that is kind of like the special trick of this technique. The new gen plugins are perfect for what we're looking for. They're incredibly powerful, but transparent, and they help us get to that sweet spot between perceived loudness and dynamics uh, really fast. Also a big plus are their visualizer tools, which I'm going to talk about uh, throughout the session. So let's go through each of these blocks and its processing. First off, it's the sub block. It's where the sub bass lives. And I start off by using this really clever new gen plugin called Monofilter. And it, it offers this fine tuning of the low end uh, with a control, for instance, of the width of the high and low frequencies which comes in handy because I did use a little bit of distortion so the sub bass would come through on smaller speakers. Uh, and I also added some stereo modulation and you want to make sure that there's uh, not a risk of any phasing. And it's got this really clever uh, auto align uh, making sure that there's no phase issues. Then I added the first limiter with the look ahead new gen ISL true pick limiter. And um, 
it's got a short look ahead time to achieve uh, greater loudness. And um, I used to worry about release time, but found that it's auto release uh, works perfectly well with most material limiter feature, the true peak limiter uh, setting uh, takes care of ratio and threshold, which is amazing. Uh, finally, make sure that the output is at 24 bits because we're living all the bit reduction for the mastering stage. Also important is the listen mode. I find the difference parameter particularly useful because you listen to the difference between the input and the output. That is the gain reduction that's being applied. The last plugin is an Ableton stock compressor just to add side chaining to the sub, which is being triggered by the kick drum. Uh, it's something that will be used throughout the blocks with multiple signals, and it's a great way to make the kick and the backbeat snare cut through the mix. The kick section begins with a linear phase EQ, the SEQ from New Gen Audio. You can also use its EQ matching feature to grab a snapshot and invert the EQ on the destination audio, just so there's no conflicting frequencies between the kick and other elements, because we want to make sure that it really comes through in the mix. The bass section features all the top bass sounds, some EQ fine tuning with the SEQ and the ISL to raise loudness. Finally, a sidechain being triggered by the kick section. It's pretty much the same for the melodic instrumentation. The difference is that I also added a sidechain being triggered by the snare. So the song has this really strong backbeat feature. The snare section has no sidechaining, just some mild EQ and again some limiting to raise the loudness. Uh, the percussion features sidechaining. It features sidechaining from both the kick and the snare drum. But the processing, it's pretty close to the snare. Again, some EQing and some limiting. Now for the vocals. Backing vocals or lead vocals have only some light EQ because we want to make sure that they feel really dynamic. And uh, finally, you've got the cymbals uh, with, again, uh, the SEQ and the ISL. Fine tune a little bit of the frequency range and also add overall uh, loudness. Um, and some side chaining as well from the kick and the snare. All these blocks are being sent to specific buses, uh, and I'm going to talk about them uh, a little bit more. Now, regarding the buses I've mentioned, I've got two pre master buses A and B. Bus A it's the kick, the snare, and all bass sounds. And we want to make sure that it feels a little bit compressed. Because it's the beat and the low end of the song. Plus B, you've got the cymbals, the percussion, the backing vocals. And it's a more dynamic bus. You are actually gluing them together. Uh, but also adding a little bit of the loudness. I've also included the new gen stereoizer to increase the width of the stereo image, which fits these particular elements. Uh, and so they fill up the background. And um, it has total mono compatibility and no unwanted artifacts. So it's a little winner from new gen. Lead vocals are sent straight to the master bus, so they are put forward to all other elements. Mind you, this is a vocal-driven arrangement. Lastly, the master bus. You can bypass the dynamic processing if you're sending this to the master engineer. If not, I'm just using a flattering EQ and the limiter to glue all the elements together. In the meantime, throughout the session, I've been using this new gen visualizer uh, for the stereo spectrogram and the vector scope. I'm using the new gen stereoizer to test the mono output 
and finally the new gen master check to measure loudness and how the resulting audio will behave on various popular streaming platforms. For this example, I'm using Spotify preset to monitor its codecs on various devices. It will show you if there's any clipping happening by turning red. These platforms have their own normalization algorithms and you want to make sure you're loud enough, but you don't get your audio turned down. You can also use an external reference, a track that you feel matches your own and sort of cross mix the various loudness elements. I hope you enjoyed this video and you try out your own techniques and do check out NewGen's website for their latest plugins. I love the Paragon Reverb as well and good luck with your mixes.